Welcome to Electron Online. So you may wonder, why do we need virtual work? Can we use it for something? Is it useful? Yes, it is. In the case of particles or systems at equilibrium, virtual work can be used to determine the forces on the particle or on the system. So let's take a simple example. Let's say we have a beam, and let's assume that the mass of the beam can be ignored relative to the force acting on the beam. The length of the beam is L, and it's supported at A and at B. So we're going to have two reactionary forces, one at A and one at B. And there's a force applied on the beam, straight down, a distance A away from the left edge of the beam. And the question is, what is the reactionary force at B? Now, of course, we have learned all kinds of methods to find that rather easily. But of course, we're going to show you how to do it using virtual work on this very simple example so that later on we can do it on much more complicated examples. And you'll see that on some of those complicated examples, using the virtual work concept is actually easier than using some of these other concepts that we have learned before earlier in the course. So how do we do it using virtual work? Well, we start with the definition that if particles or systems are at equilibrium, that means there is no net force acting on it. That means that the virtual work done is going to be equal to zero. And we can define it as being equal to the sum of all the forces acting on the system. And so that would be the forces, uh, let's call it sub i, from i equals 1 to n. And we're going to dot those forces with du. So we're going to have a dot product between each of the forces acting on the system and then multiplying that times a small imaginary displacement du. And we know that's going to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there are three forces, one here, one there, and one there. And so when we have a dot product, we multiply the magnitude of the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. So starting with the first force, the reactionary force at A, and let me show you what we're doing here is we're moving the beam an imaginary distance just on the one side where the reactionary force at B is. We're not moving it over here at A. So this force here will not be doing any virtual work because that part of the beam will not actually be moving or even it won't be moving in an imaginary sense. It'll just stay stationary. So let's add up all the three dot products. So the first one will be the magnitude of the reaction of force at A times the displacement. So we multiply the times the displacement will be zero. And so we don't have to do anything else there. Then next, we're going to take the force here. So that would be plus the magnitude of the force pushing down times the displacement. Now, how much did this displace? Well, if at the end of the beam here, the displacement is du, we have to take a fraction of that, and the fraction will be A divided by L. So the magnitude of the displacement will be the fraction A over L times du times the cosine of the angle between the two. Now the force is acting downward and du is acting upward. The angle is 180 degrees, which means we're going to multiply this times the cosine of 180 degrees. Then plus, See here, now we have the reactionary force at B, so we have the magnitude of R sub B times the displacement, again, that imaginary displacement, and in this case, it is indeed du, the whole du, times the cosine of the angle between the two, and notice they're both pointing in the same direction, the, the angle is zero, so it'll be the cosine of zero degrees. Now this part is zero, and of course, all that adds up to zero, because the virtual work done on a particle or a system that is at equilibrium, the, vir the, the virtual work done will always be equal to zero. So this term is zero. Then here, the cosine of 180 is minus 1. So this becomes minus F times A over L. Oh, and let's see here. What else can we do? Well, we have a du in each term. So since that's set equal to zero, the du's cancel. So it doesn't really matter how much we move or we make the vertical movement. We can cancel out the du. So we have f times a over l times the cosine of 180, which is minus 1. That's where this minus came from. And then here we have plus r sub b, the reactionary force would be, 
times a cosine of zero, which is one, and that adds up to zero. And then all we have to do is move this term to the other side, and so therefore the magnitude of the reactionary force of B is equal to A over L times the force applied to the beam. Notice it's actually quite nice. It works very slick. And notice that even on a simple example, you can see the beauty of the technique. I say, well, I have much better ways to do that, which is fine. We can, do, we can use moments or torques or anything like that. But this works for even much more complicated examples. So we'll work our way to the more complicated ones to, to show you how nice a technique this actually can be. But now you can see how it actually works in a very simple example. And that's how it's done.